Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Man from Osirian, Mummy's Mask. And as you can see here, <laughs> I'm already having technical difficulties uh, out of the gate, but uh, that's okay. Bear, if you'll bear with us um, for just a moment or 12 we'll get these sorted. So gentlemen, welcome back. It's, it's been a while. I mean, uh, for a podcast that, uh, supposedly started at all. Um, I, uh, it changed me to say that we've, you know, we've had trouble, um, keeping this one. Um, what's the word I'm looking for going s steadily. Like, I mean, we're not giving it up, but it's, uh, it's been dodgy. <laughs> it's been, um, it's been on and off. I mean, even tonight, uh, poor Ashley Florence wanted to play so bad and was willing to defy doctor's orders uh, with her bronchitis and like seven, eight months pregnant to, to play with us. And we were like, no, no, you rest, you know, you cheer us on um, from the sidelines because I mean, come on, folks, you know, like health, health and family with us, you know, it's, it's got to come first. Always, always. Um, That's the first time I've ever heard that from you, Jeff. You're usually yeah. like, Aiden, ignore everything and everyone. I don't care if you're, <laughs> you know, if you're dying on the floor, get up here and game. That That's true. But you're special to me. <laughs> That's fair. I appreciate did, the did love, Did you get Jeff. those amphetamines I sent you? Uh, <laughs> to keep you going, right? Game, damn you, game. Uh, but we are, let's go around the house. You know, I, as soon as I get, uh, my, our, our call back up here, we seem to have, um, we dropped out our call, but like, where, where do we leave, leave off? I mean, guys, uh, we're sitting on some footage that sort of takes the scene elsewhere. You guys were battling a ghost scorpion with a pale shell. Our android from afar has lost his memory and is now being to emulate that being played by a completely separate player. We have the star of our show, Old Man Arif, a Kelishite, not Osirian. He's the Arab. This is the Egyptian land. But, you know, a traveling scholar, a cloistered cleric has come from afar. And, of course, the ever cunning, uh, always confused um, Vex Vandal, who lost a hand, gained a hand, lost it again, and his inner workings of his body, you know, unbeknownst to what's going on inside, thinks it's all just a sign or, or design of Phrasma, for better or worse. And here you guys are on the Scorpion's turn of round two, where we left it. Um, does does anyone have anything they wish to, to add before we jump back in? I'm just pulling up the thing here. No? Uh, nope. <laughs> it's been a little while so yep just nobody, familiarize nobody's, myself with the sheet nobody's got nothing to say nobody's got nothing just, just hello everybody hello everyone welcome back all right guten tag to our I, german I think audience we were um, ab about to win that that's where we left off see i thought we were oh, about oh, to die okay. Yeah. No, no, you were gonna die but that's it's all win. perspective that's fair. gentlemen it's all perspective yeah, I was uh, speaking of uh, German fans because I, I had mentioned to Aiden uh, earlier last year that uh, our number one audience, of course, is the U.S. And you think number two would be Canada because we have half Canadian. And it was like 50 percent U.S. listeners and like 10 percent German and 8 percent um, Canadian and then a smattering of across the world. Gentlemen, those numbers have changed. Thanks to the huge indulgence of Spotify listeners who have found us on Spotify, we are sitting at 71% American audience and nice. like 8, 10% Sweden, Swedish audience. And our, sadly, Matt, our Canadian audience is still <laughs> adult. So, uh, America, mm, yeah, you know, thanks for listening. Um, but here we are. And let me just uh, do a quick little swap so my, my background becomes as, as pretty as the rest of you. And we will heave ho, you know, headlong back into the hot, hot, hot deserts 
of Osirian on the world of Galorian, in the inner sea region, on the continent of Gurundi, the Egyptian parallel to our own world with far more thousands of years of pharaohs dead, gone, and buried than our own true state. Gentlemen, I believe a little bit of, um, you say you won, but I'm not, I'm not buying it. So I still think uh, ye old battle music, you know, is in order because you never know how uh how well this uh you know this stuff's gonna go so the scorpion was facing off with the android and i believe now that i'm positioned i'm going to finally have a decent you know a decent go a decent uh, triple threat here where i've got um either a couple claws or the sting or that i've set up here you know for my full-on Going to do the old all claws and the stinger. And we're looking at clamping, clamp you, swinging with um, claw one missing and a second one at Rin, his armor protecting him. He's scraping against that fine, what it's not actually a masterwork plate, uh, banded mail, but you know, the, the residents think it's so. And even with the stinger, all missing scraping and clanking off that shiny shiny otherworldly armor and it is now old man Arif El Basir's turn sir what do you do Arif did he did he nod off is he asleep <laughs> nope you just going all robot on me there for a second Oh. I'm trying to open. I'm trying to open too many things all at once. Okay. Um, let's see here. So I am gonna reach way back. Uh, try, try to understand what, no, 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 what's going on. Yes. Um, and I'm gonna try to uh, use a knowledge skill. Uh, see if I see what I know about this thing. Okay. The right, old. So um, the old. Ye old knowledge dungeoneering, maybe. I gotcha. I gotcha. Failing you. Okay. Um, that's just a raw roll, but that's a twenty-three. Okay. Um, I'd actually have to go with nature, okay. as opposed to dungeoneering. Now, I I would say that dungeoneering would also work with a slightly higher DC. Okay. Uh, so if you have a favorite, by all means, but I think you'd want to have an overwhelming dungeoneering before you lay off, you know, the other. Yeah, no worries. Um, let's see here. The die roll is a 13, so I'd add 5 okay. to it. My knowledge nature is plus 5, so 18 knowledge nature. Okay. Uh, this is a small vermin. Uh, it has dark vision, tremor sense, a decent perception. It does not have a huge, like it has a natural shell, but its AC is like, you know, like 12. Your biggest threat is that poison, that stinger. Okay. You know, it, it does have a, a decent, uh, you know, classic nasty poison uh as okay. it were but it but it's straight up sort of hit to hit combat with claws of d3 damage and plus two it's like you know it's not like it's not an awesome combat and um we must have sort of agitated it somehow you know oh my dark cold place to escape the sun what Ugh! and everyone f jumps up and it's you know it, it definitely wants to fight for the, its new lair but you know we've stirred it up it's the stinger you really got to worry about um, so, so then I'll drop this piece of knowledge in game. Uh, 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 according to um, uh, Farad's desert dwelling creatures, uh, uh, beware of the stinger. Uh, the, the venom is terrible. And uh, I will use my action to grant Ren a plus three to his armor class through an aid other. Hmm. The and yeah, okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, that's me. That's a uh, my standard action. Okay. Vex. Yes. Mr. Vandal. Mr. Vandal, yes. What do you do? You were cowering, turtled up, rapier pointing out in a corner when we left you, I believe, last session. This is true, very true. Trying to hide. Not very successfully. I will uh, move five feet forward and attack. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, yes, very good. All right. And so um, I'm also going to activate my energy strike, which is Go a su Suli ability, adding Go an additional on. 1d6 electrical damage to any attack with a physical weapon or an arm strike. Okay. So here it comes. Natural 20. Nice. Not confirmed. <laughs> so automatic hit, but not auto crit. Hiya! So that is 1d6. Okay. Plus two piercing damage. Now, this ability, can you convert to a weapon or do you have to strike them with your hands? Because I know that the classic Suli that goes with fire, it's like his arms are light with fire and he can like box with it. Can you transfer this energy to a weapon? Once per day is a swift action. A Suli can shroud her arms in acid, cold, or electricity fire. This attack lasts for one round per level and can be dismissed as a free action. Unarmed strikes with her arms or hands or attacks with weapons held in those hands deal 1d6 points of damage of the appropriate energy type. Awesome. Awesome. Can I have a perception check? From me? From oh, you. Oh, what do I see? You developed this ability because of your heritage through fate, fast, fun fiction, fleeing, and you'll never forget the day that you almost stopped a man's heart by just holding up a hand against his chest to keep him from stealing back the bread you stole uh, and gave him sort of a stun gun. <laughs> you know, oh, wow, I'm more than human. Thank you, Fry's my kind of thing. That faded day. Um, and you learned how to control this energy coming into your current level and growing up Yep. from that, that young boy that lost his hand. Um, and like you said, once a day, it takes a lot of concentration and it takes a little bit out of you, right? Yep. Can't do it again. Um, but it's skin contact and it's just your arms. It's like a elbow, you know, shoulder to, to wrist or elbow to fingertip kind of deal, right? Now, you're holding a rapier, which is made of metal, and you've learned to, you know, slide your thumb up to the metal part as you strike and conduct. Okay? Yep. As you 20 with your hit, what is your perception? 16. You're not sure, but you swear that your fingernails grew into sort of a long, silvery, um, metallic-looking wedges that just sort of thickened, lengthened, and sort of help you wrapped around and make contact with the steel and the energy flowed through them that more efficiently, just for a split second. And you attack your foe, eyes on the target, and when you come back and peek at your hand, it's back to or it's back to normal. Perhaps Excellent. it was a perhaps a mirage. Excellent. Strange. So I did um six points of damage with the regular attack and then also uh four points of additional electrical damage so a total of 10 points of damage okay barring any electrical resistance Hiya. okay you jab it it shrieks turns on you it's badly wounded and then you electrify it and it it gets seriously wounded this thing is it's it's sluggish immediately it's really angry you know it's probably even more dangerous, but you've hurt, you guys have tag teamed it, and that last strike, Vex, you know you've hurt it rather badly. Ren, Ren. Okay, so before we go into what my character does, how do mm -hmm. I target creatures? Uh, I can look after that for you. Just tell me, like, keep it in the role playing sense. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, uh, we... And just FYI, if you open the combat tracker, hold, I believe it's control, and select the uh, monster you want to target. Mm -hmm. there's several ways you can actually drop the dice right on top of the target um, oh, okay. in your tracker there's a target where I can grab it and, and I've already targeted it for you uh, we have the first nine episodes of our live action Age of Ashes where we talk about the interface I know you haven't had a lot of experience with that but I've gotten to a way where um, I can help control your guy so that we can stay in the theater of the mind so just play like you would normally and Perfect. like I said it, it, you know, just kind of fudge your way along we won't have to talk about the, the aspect of that so Seeing, you're, set up, you're good to go. Wonderful, thank you. So mm -hmm. seeing Vex, you know, stab this thing and it turns on him, I'm not happy about that because I like being the center of attention. You know, I like I'm built for eating hits, mm -hmm. and so take my long sword, you know, spin it in my hands, and then swing it down on this scorpion. 
Okay. Uh, 14 to hit. Okay. And... Oh. Uh, one sec. And 10 damage, if it connects. Okay. Um, I have you targeted, so I'm kind of surprised that it's not actually automatically... You know, telling you that it, you attacked the actual creature and yeah. did the damage. But I can tell you, when you come down, you sever the forward part of its head where the top claws are and basically take the head and those four claws straight off and it, it sort of hinge drops to the ground. You don't sever it, but, you know, you've exposed a huge part of the carapace and it falls, uh, shall we say, twitching and barely moving to the ground. And then stops. (laughs) (laughs) What do you got going on there, F? I see the the, uh, the dice rolling in the background there. Oh, I was supposed to roll to see if I can grant up that armor class adjustment. So it's Ah. a die roll minus... <clears throat> Die roll minus one, so 14. So I would have given him a plus three to armor class. Okay. You have a plus three to armor class against the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> this corpse. Now, h- how Sorry, long is it, that? It, it's been a while. <clears throat> no, that's fine. What's that? Uh, tag team and tactics, right? I mean, that's yeah. that, that will, uh, you know, that uh, wins the day in the end. Uh, my question yeah. for you, yeah. Monsieur Arif, is um, the... Uh, um, what am I looking the for? Bonus. Yeah, like how long does that last? Um, until my next action. So in, oh, until okay. I go again. So basically, I grant it his entire turn, and then right before it comes to me, then I can either choose to do something different or roll again to see if I continue to grant him that bonus. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cool. So yeah, we'll see. Very we'll cool. See very out. useful. Yes, I mean, having a good defense is always better than uh, than getting stung. Yes. <laughs> this is why thousands of years later, you know, his sayings almost take, but not quite. Somebody has something slightly <laughs> catchier <laughs> <laughs> that that takes into the you know in the long run. So. um <laughs> Rin, peeking your head at the door, you know, this thing does not seem to have friends. Tumbleweeds blow on. Um, what do you guys wish to do? Well, perhaps we should find some way that we can block this to prevent further intrusion. Indicating towards the door. They are stone and heavy. You could just close them. I mean, you keep Ren. the critters out anyway. Ren will, you know, grab the doors and start to close them. Leave them slightly cracked because I believe we had a tough time getting them open in the first place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just uh, you know want to leave off the proverbial open invitation, right? Yep. I'll I'll, and while he's doing that, I'll dig through my pack and light a torch. All right. Now, had you guys gone as far as turning the big wheel of a door that's in the track on the back wall? No, we hadn't gotten there. Oh no. Okay. Okay. And you guys were, um, you were looking at the, uh, you know, let's, just to refresh, you know, rectangular room, save for some engravings and fixtures upon the wall. There was a pair of heavy stone doors to the north that you just closed, an immense stone wheel of a door against the south wall. The air was stale in here. There's a layer of dust and sand that covered the floor. Lying in a thick layer um, to the south, all four walls bear a sunken relief engravings and hieroglyphs, while some stone faces are affixed to the walls at about shorter height in each corner these objects you see on the map are these stone faces Uh, and the door itself is engraved with a large spiral religious looking symbol and there is a there's a track like a groove in the floor and the ceiling that that big stone wheel is kind of sitting in uh, almost indicating that you could possibly like roll it within the track so it doesn't fall out or flat I will move up to the hieroglyphics there and see if I can't make sense of anything. See if it, it, it 
is a dire warning or instructions on how to open the door. Speak friend and enter. Okay. Um, on the walls, I think we already had you studying them when the, you know, they were uh, written in ancient Osurian. Um, can I, I have speak some? Yeah, there you go. Uh, can I have some knowledge <laughs> religion checks from you, gentlemen? Uh, let's see. Knowledge religion will be plus nine to that. Mm -hmm. I know from everyone. Of religion. This is, oh, no? Okay. I know nothing, I but I will uh, move towards the door and uh, take a look to see if I can make out any mechanical controls, connections. Okay. So I got a 25. Look for traps. Okay. Ren got a 14 on knowledge religion. Okay. Did you want to roll perception? Or sorry, shall I roll perception to see if you seem to find a trap? Or do you want to take your two minutes and 20 there? Uh, <clears throat> I do have to state that that is an option. If you want to take two minutes and take your natural 20, you can when searching for a trap. A lot of people forget I, this fact. Yeah. I'll, I'll. Well, I rolled a 15. So I'll, I'll go with what I rolled. Oh, okay. Um, so starting with um, Ren, actually, you've lost your memory. So when your internal database sort of analyzes, highlights, and tells you that the big spiral on the door is a common religion known as phrasmic worship in this town, in the region, uh, you're kind of curious where this comes from. It's almost like your brain is telling your brain, digs up this data. Um, not a lot on it, but you do know that it is a goddess of the afterlife, somewhat. Um, has several titles, and a lot of the data is corrupted. You know, like it, it, the you're trying to remember, like you remember that the goddess does have several titles besides just being Phrasma, but you the data is corrupted. You can't sort of access it. Probably do with your memory loss. And there's also obvious stuff like it's a very common religion here. The old man worships this religion. He actually has a holy symbol on him, little spiral, you know, around the neck. Um, and that's about it for you. Uh, Arif, with your 20, did you say? Uh, no, I got a 25. 25. Um, yeah, interesting a 25. that a modern and ancient religion is mixed in these tombs because this was built, you know, these were built 1,200 years ago when the old Osirian gods were worshipped, where now there's only a smattering of shrines and temples, a lot more uh, in this area of Osiria than across the world especially in Katapesh, there's the odd this and that. But the dominant faith in Katapesh being Sarenre, goddess of the sun, you yourself choosing another modern Galorian religion, Phrasma, goddess, lady of graves, of death and fate. Uh, what a delightful scholarly treat to see the embodiment of the ancient Osirian god of death compared to yours on the door, big spiral Phrasma, you know, you speak jive. The heads are the jackal god head likeness of Anubis. Okay. Okay. Two of them. The other two look like they are um, about the same age. So this was made at the same time are actually of your goddess Phrasma. And they double as torch holders. Isn't that nice? Look at that. We're in the architecture. That, that is wonderful. nice. That's that's wonderful. So so yeah. as I I'll, I'll kind of say these things out. Akim uh, uh, once published an at atlas, uh, 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 subtitled the the things uncertain. Yeah, and he may often made comparisons about about how the gods would often evolve with their peoples, or or was it the understandings of their teachings that led those peoples? To interpret their gods in new lights, this is this is interesting. Um, do you have any chalk and paper? I would love to have a rubbing of this. Just to, to, to take back. Uh, any, anyone? Anyone? And I'll begin to set things down and start to root through my pack as uh, uh, Vex tries to pick at the door. What? Okay. What, what was that, Arif? You want me to rub the door? You could you could try rubbing it, but but essentially, I would like to copy. Anyway, he's waving his hand. Everything, yes. 
all of this must be preserved in, in some fashion so it can be studied later. It, it, it's really f- f- fascinating uh, the way that the, the, the personages, the, the way, and he'll just ramble on and on oh, yeah, as, yeah, until- <laughs> as he digs deeper into his pack for a paper. It, it, it'll poke his head up every now and then. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, does the door open? I think this is going to take us some time. Hmm. Ren is um, just standing with you know the torch up and the, <laughs> the long sword just down at his side, just just waiting. Okay. The uh, the silent tear from the android. <laughs> Humans take such a long time to process data. Um, Vex, you don't seem to find a trap. Oh, I I love saying that all the way back from my D and D days, man. It's just that's my best line. I don't see you don't seem to find a trap. Did I find I any uh, like? evidence of uh, mechanism well for... give me an intelligence check here sure. uh, disable disable device if you want to juice it yeah i'll do disable device mm-hmm. uh, you know back in the days uh, disable dis- um, device 18 okay i might be able to help with that and Hang uh on just one intelligence check of 15 oh it's gonna go with um one or the other whatever because you know you the logical way of you um, applying both. Um, so anyway, well, let's wait for air for one second. Okay. Um, actually, I, I can't. I, I don't have disabled device, so I can't be helpful for this particular task. Okay. So, um, I mean, a street-wise young vagabond, you know, growing up in a land of pharaohs and tombs and 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 so desperate and hungry that maybe you've even traversed into the local ones that have been plundered just to get a feel for the stones the underdwellings you know that kind of thing you've never encountered but you've heard of this type of door it really is a wheel that is set in place with a track yeah you know a good 50 50 chance it's trapped um but a lot of this kind of thing is for show i mean the wall door is uh, the wall itself is 10 feet the door is like 10 feet diameter so this this disc is 10 foot diameter stone six inches wide and you guess weighs upwards of you know 5700 pounds almost 6000 pounds um but with enough oomph you know and leverage you should just be able to roll this sucker right along its track and uh, since you don't find any mechanism to uh yeah. you know, impede I'll uh, I'll just kind of like look at Arif and Ren and be like, um, perhaps you might want to stand back in case there is trap I could not find. Okay. Oh, 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 oh my! Yeah, yes, that is very wise. And Arif will hmm, back way up. <laughs> so R- Ren will make sure Arif is behind him. Okay. And just directly in front. Uh, Ren, can I have a intelligence check, please? Sure. <laughs> Try to stay inside of a square, boys. <laughs> That's what they're there for. <laughs> 16. Your data processor tells you that it, g- guessing by the mass and strength and girth uh, calculatable from this young youth, that he would need your help to move an object of this weight and mass and diameter. Oh, will I? Let's let the dice determine. Oh, yes, very much. Please. <laughs> <laughs> You want to continue that thought? Oh, oh God, I'm not cut out for this. Yeah, but I did bring a ten foot pole. Uh, a- a hands torch over to, yeah. um, to the old man. She's the long sword on his belt, and then grabs the door with both hands and tries to okay. move it. Seventeen. What is your actual strength score? 14. And you, Vex? 14. Okay. Combined, gentlemen, you have a total strength score of 28, which is exactly what is needed. I've never seen this before. It's very interesting. They don't they don't say like a DC check. They just say, you know, put two guys in the door, and if they total 28, uh, scrape, scrunch, you know. Yay! <laughs> Huzzah! Not Win. going to lie, it was a little bit hard only having the one hand. Hmm. <laughs> I loosened it for you. <laughs> you what? I loosened it. Oh, you... <laughs> That's what I said. Last game. Yeah, okay. So. 
what's on the other side? Arif will wave the torch in, you know, eager to see what's in there. Uh, 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 move it. Uh, Did any traps it. go off? <laughs> funny, funny you should say that. Um, uh, Arif, they got the stone door open, but were you still interested in either, like, I don't know, coming back to to the... Um... To rub off on it? I are get oh, rubbings? Abs- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, something. Absolutely. So if, if they're going to explore ahead, I will. Uh, hey, I, 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 I've got some paper. Yes. Uh, Who do? <laughs> and then I'll get some of the uh, chalk and some of the rice paper that I had set aside. And I'll begin to take small rubbings of s- certain areas he thinks is important, but may or may not be. Okay. Ren will you know, stand like halfway in between, still keeping an eye on the old man, but also keeping an eye on Vex. Just like. Arif's trying to use like every square inch of the paper strategically. Yeah. Uh, don't mind me. Take a look. I'll be right along. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so drawing my rapier, I'll cautiously peer into the room. All right. So once you get the uh, proverbial stone aside... The next chamber is bare, but it is quite interesting, as it is unusual. The square room is starkly devoid of any markings or dormant, like the last room. But in the center of the chamber's floor, a square shaft drops straight down into darkness. A faint, musty odor rises from this pit. A single piton has been hammered into the stone floor by the northeastern corner of the pit, and a dusty length of rope dangles from the pit into the darkness of the shaft. What do you do? It, it appears that we're, we're perhaps not the first people here. Somebody staked your claim. Grave robbers. Very offensive, Vex. It is a filthy profession. Are we uh, not doing the exact same thing? Are these not graves and are we not robbing them? I have not taken anything. Have you taken anything? Not at the moment, but that is is that not what we are doing? No, we are simply coming to explore. Maybe we find some treasure. It's okay. We just have to make sure we show the people at the gate, you know? So grave robbing with more steps and legal approval. Okay. I prefer the term archaeology. And with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Whoa. My bad. <laughs> so, as, we, as we sit and, and, and ponder this this change of maps and, and things uh, uh, there's a certain excerpt from the black swans encyclopedia that talks about the untaken path you know he, he kind of says it with some with some spook to his voice um it, it's often best to to send the heartier of your adventures down first yet yet uh, make sure you test the rope strength <laughs> because if you're at the bottom i can't reach you should you need any healing so Take bear, bear that in, in in mind. Also, if we have more than one torch, we could throw it down to see. Just a suggestion. That is a good idea, old man. And I'll start ruffling through the pack and pull out another torch and light it up and drop it down the hole. Right. Oh. Now, hopefully, it doesn't catch that rope on fire. <laughs> Um, do you guys not have uh, dark vision? I have low light. I believe I do have dark. I'm as human as the... I, I have old man vision. Bring, bring it closer. <laughs> yes, My eyes he's... aren't what they used to be. He's going to need braille very soon. I was actually thinking about taking a level in Oracle and taking the uh, cursed vision. I thought that'd be kind of cool. How can oh, yeah. I further handicap the world's most worthless character class? 
No, I, <laughs> I, I love this character, and I, I still think, um, even though some of your spell casting has been switched for skills, this this is definitely uh, a campaign that where you know skills are, you know your your Indiana Jones overtures, as it were, explaining to everybody are is gonna not only help sell the game, but I think it's gonna really help um, put everybody in the you know the mindset. So I I couldn't think of doing this with anybody else. You hear that? If Frank dies, we cancel the show. I'm sorry, I just I can't go on. Can't go on. <laughs> Game over, man. Game yeah. over. You first. Yeah, this yeah. is Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> Boot. Yeah, so so nasty, right? Um sorry, so you want to light a torch, drop it down? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Count count the <whistles> boom. Approximately Work. intelligence check, if you had to guess. Watch for you, it, and yes, you can see that you can see the torch. You know, uh, eleven. Uh, it drops into a hole of about fifty odd feet, and then hits a floor at about sixty. Seventeen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the ceiling of the shaft, like it, it is a solid square shaft, and then it stops and opens into some kind of chamber, and the torch continues, you know, into the hole or into the chamber and hits a floor at sixty feet. Okay. It, 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 if I didn't know any better, I, I would say that. It's a, 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 a large chamber down there. It, interesting. Can, continue. Move He'll kind of nudge, and check it. nudge the rope. <laughs> uh, well, the the rope. And the piton. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's thoroughly rotted and starts crumbling in your hands as you... <laughs> And the, how's the piton? Uh, the piton seems relatively secure. So Still I'll good to use. Pull the rope out of my pack and <laughs> how much Attach do I have? I might, only, I might only have 50 feet though. Give me a second. Let me see. Well, that'll get you to like 10 foot off the floor. I don't even have that. I don't have any rope. Do you have rope? <laughs> <laughs> and we go back. <laughs> Well, a wise man is never without a few supplies. Yes, um, rummaging through his pack. Okay. Rope. Ah. I do have. I do have fifty feet. So. Uh, okay. There you go. Tie it off. Uh, we may need to boost somebody on on the way back up, but uh, I I think this should work. Mm hmm. Uh, Ren, how about you? Do, you? do you have anything that you can add to the to the length here? Looking at perhaps? his side. Zip. Other Sorry. side. <laughs> yeah, the guy in banded mail. Easy climb. And a, no, and no a sword. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> he ties the sword to the end. I have nothing it's like one else. of those one of those uh, weight pendulums with the weight on it for getting the, the straight line in construction, right? It's got the the blue chalk line and then you No? <laughs> okay. Nothing. Okay, so we have an old piton. 50 feet of rope, and three people all looking at each other. I will take 20 <laughs> to climb down. Uh, can I do I that? I think you can, because failure means you fall to your possible doom. Back in the day, I've been known to be a stickler for some rules, and right out of the adventure, I do, I do like it when an adventure decides to either do something to get on with things, or restricts and when it restricts i have to argue with players because like oh, in the book right in one of this points gentlemen it's talking about a successful dc of mm -hmm, climb check is needed to ascend or descend and i take that as full length okay so um because if it was 20 check well if you if it was a 25 every time you went like, 25 would be bare wall, right? If you have a rope yeah. braced to a wall, it drops it to, like, 5, 10 tops. So, unless you're wearing, I don't know, banded mail and carrying a sword or whatever, you have very little, you know, unless you roll that natural one, you got to fail by four or more, right? Nine. So, so you're going to start there? Okay. So, anyway, um, you've got 50 feet of shaft. Your climbing speed is one quarter. So, that's technically 10 rolls. So, if you want to humor me this just once, 
you know, spam away, and we watch Vex descend. Five feet, ten feet, keep them coming. Natural one. Oh, natural one? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Vex, you get, um, uh, was it? Five feet down. Yeah, five feet down, and it's a 55-foot drop. So taking, okay. like, 5d6. <laughs> any any chance of, like, re-catching the rope? Yep. That's pretty far drop. Yep. We had a good run. Do you want a reflex check? A reflex of 20 to catch that rope on your way down. Oh, or shit. 18, or 18 points of damage is yours to discover. So he slips and he starts flailing. 16. Oh, so ah! close. Uh, anyway, it's long enough that I'll actually let you do it, too. I'll give you two tries. Nope. Three. So you fall. Ah. Um, and you want to spend a hero point? No, you want to spend a hero point? First edition hero points, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's you can that? you can spend it to, you get a plus four after the roll, so that 16 would become 20. Or if you want, I want a hero point up front, give you a plus eight. Because we had the, you know, proverbial single hero point in place. Well... It's enough for me to know that you would have been splatted. And drop a hero point. Yeah, I fell, and I'll drop a hero point so I don't die. Okay, so you fall, and you grab the rope, and it slips through your fingers. And oh yeah, one handed too, so that probably worked yeah on a minus. Yep. Um, and you you know you clutch at it, you try to do the monkey rope thing with your legs, you know, because you've been scamping your whole life up trees and and buildings and everything. Um, and well, the strangest this is my first day without a, a new yeah, hand. The, the strangest thing happens um, as you clasp instinctively with both arms, right? Yep. Okay. Um, your stump extends six inches. And where normally you would miss and it would just fall off the end of your stump, a, you know, your arm just seems to be in a flash longer enough to kind of pull the rope like catch it and pull it towards you where you grab it with your other hand and legs and, you know, almost at the bottom go yoink gah! and you take 1d6 points of non-lethal damage as you get jolted, <coughs> you know. Can I have a strength check? Natural one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> So you you get the jolted. curse of the mummy's mask. You, you yeah you get jolted you uh, you catch it and you're you know like I got it and then you just like swing into the wall, push, <laughs> ow, <laughs> and take three points of non lethal damage. So there you are, with about five ten feet to the ceiling, and a, still a fifteen to twenty foot drop left. What do you do? Oh, Pharasma, be praised. Looking at my stump. That's just a stump. You don't even know what you saw. What the hell? You saw a hero point in flavored nano action, but you know. <laughs> I, look up, I look up the shaft. I'm okay. <laughs> just. You see those movies where the guy falls down a hole and it, it literally is, you see like not only hands, but like feet just, you know, like at the camera and they fall straight back away from you. You know, that's what he yeah. does. He just does the, uh, you know, they just see him flailing. And because of our limited vision, right, there's that sort of gap of darkness that's not the floor with the 20 foot uplit from the torch at the bottom and the ambient light up here. He just disappear, disappears into darkness. And then all of a sudden, you know, you see the shadow slam into a wall. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. Uh, I am going to attempt to climb down the last five feet. Yep. Hey, at least that kept you from spamming 10 rolls. Oh, God, five. You're fine because, like I said, the DC's five, and unless, <laughs> unless you fail it by four, you know. Okay, and then from the end, I'll just drop mm -hmm. the last 10 feet. Okay. Um, now, a natural one and a natural 20 uh, on skills is irrelevant. That three... With four, five rope brace, you actually probably wouldn't have really fall. But I like the idea of, you know, natural one, you slip, you know, you burn the hero point back. So uh, we'll discuss something heroic or sacrificial to get you that hero point back. But I may have actually slipped the rules on that. But hey, in the end, you're fine. 
I will be so nice as to say that I won't retract what happened, but you don't hit the heart. You don't, you know, you know, rubbing it off, you, you know, regenerate that non-lethal damage. Because I might have buggered your slipping falling rules. My apologies. I have so many systems running in my head. And we just came I know, off I was the second edition game. I was like, like oh. oh, this is an athletics check. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, that, that, was, that was interesting. Next. How exciting. Yeah, next. No, I don't recommend doing it the way I did. This is going to grab a complete the disaster. There's an excerpt right. called Dragons and Butterflies, where, where the hero, Gadas, starts very, very, very similarly. You know, he'll, he'll kind of leans over. Um, so, so take heart. So Ren grabs the rope, rolls a three. And I okay. will... Uh, I was... Okay. Um, so if you fail, you don't make progress, but yeah. the fall has to be, you know, badly. Yeah. Um, well, oh, his like, one got him a three. Is... Your seven got you a three. Like I said, it's, it's, I did, yeah. believe the DC is five. You have a wall to brace, a rope, and it drops yeah. a DC from you know, all the way to like practically five. So, but for you, because your penalties of your armor, yeah, you know, we could get, you know, you could get below that five, that one, you know, yeah. So as long as you roll six or higher, you know, like five or you know, type of things. Yeah. But anyway, moving on. Very exciting. Spam away. Oh, okay. Give me a sec. The problem uh, is if you don't make any progress, you're still at the top kind of fumbling around. Yeah. So. Okay, natural 19 for 15. Yep. Hooray. Five feet down. Ten, ten for six. Feet, ten feet down. Eight for a four. There we go. Fifteen. Keep going. You're doing great. Oh, okay. There's the natural one for a <laughs> negative three. And all the way down. <laughs> He's twenty feet down and he falls. Um would you like to spend a hero point? Yeah, reflex, and you want to spend a hero point on it. Uh, yeah, it'd sure. It would give it give you a plus four. Well, what's your reflex save? Um, give me a sec. Because <laughs> um, this character sheet isn't modifying it properly. Um, oh, I, oh. I, I got it here. Your reflex, according to this, um, is like plus one. Yeah, well, does he get affected by armor? A reflex save? Yeah. No. think so. No. Okay. Then I will spend a hero point. So Before I get the, the plus the eight. Because I'm spending it before I roll for a reason. Exactly. Cash. So down the bottom here, in the bottom left, it says zero modifier. If you type in plus eight right in there and then roll your dice, it'll it'll give it to you. Got it. And if you just want to click on the tiny dice there, it'll Please fire off it. the reflex Please for you. 18. Yep. Uh, so that's... Oh, so that's the total. And you yeah, need 20. I need 20. You need 20 to reflex the rope. The, the catch the proverbial lip. The, yeah. ah. it, now you're, what are you? You're first level, 20 feet down. 20 feet down. So 40 I'll, feet I'll, left, I'll get, 4d6. I'll get, yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll give you another reflex at the end, but it's going to be 25. It's going to be harder because that rope. You have another shot like, you know, on the fall because you didn't get it at the top and I, you're almost down. I literally like you, can't make it, Jeff. Yes, you can. I believe in you. <laughs> my almost degree in engineering says otherwise natural even 20. even with the natural 20 for 21 i still yeah. can't beat a dc 25 i don't have another hero point oh um, i see i see um, mathematically so impossible so close right but uh sorry i didn't finish my sentence um to grab the 20 is falling off a cliff and it's to grab the edge yeah which is much harder than having the bonus of the rope Right, because the uh, rope drops a DC. So I'm, I'm saying, um, sorry, the because I was stating like the rope, you know, grab the edge oh, of the okay. cliff, DC at twenty. You're on your way down. Grab it again. Oh, I'll make it twenty five. And I didn't get into talking about the rope. So guess what? Pulling a natural twenty out of your butt, you're like right at the end, and yoink. Ugh. But such a yoink. I want a strength check. Of course. To see if you can hang on. Eighteen. And you do, and you, you know, you hang on, you yoink, and you're dangling below 
the you know you slam around a little bit of whiplash yep a little bit of whiplash um but you know what the six points of subduel is better than death yeah, now, that's fair. Do you do, do you want to know what you would have taken? Was yes, it 46? For uh 4d6, I Yeah, there's there's rules like if you make the acrobatics check, you can you like ignore take... the first one, but Yeah, you okay, well Oh yeah, would've that would have six... just dropped me. Spla- splatted you? Splat. Yeah. I mean, not there's... true dead, but splat. See, see ropes but... are fun. We're having so much exciting. I've almost Super. killed two characters. Uh, unfortunately, they live, survive, but how, it's so dramatic. I, I, I'm digging this. I really am. Uh, Arif, you ready to end the show and just swan dive in there? I believe in Phrasma. Whoosh. <laughs> Phrasma. <laughs> Pulls out his knife, cuts the rope. Yep. Bye. Uh, <laughs> Next to him. <laughs> what are you, That's Fafal? So evil. <laughs> so evil. Right. He I'm says, not he doing says, that. Well, well oh, oh, by, the, by the way, I'm not an old man. <laughs> yeah. No. Screw you. You won't uh, do my rubbings right. for me. <laughs> Show you guys. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, wonderful. My disguise worked. It is me for fall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> peels off the old man layer. And there's blue skin underneath. I'm back. <laughs> Screw all cat kind. They'll never, they never, you know, they never know this be. That's funny. Uh, oh, no, seriously. Right. And, and, uh, <laughs> st- stand below and, and, and get ready to catch me. <laughs> this rope is proving uh, more challenging than I thought. Ren has his arms out, just ready. Here we go. 17 for 16. Okay. 5. 13. 10. 5. Come on, baby. Seven. Natural 20 for 19. There Six. It is. <laughs> Six. No, you got you to gotta miss it by four or more. The DC's five. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as you don't oh, roll a two. So oh, close, man. He's always close. at the end. Whoa, 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 you know. Um, he twitches there on the go. rope and like oh, some no, scrolls and stuff spills out of his pack and then he st- instinctively like grabs for the books and then almost loses his grip twice. <laughs> it's funny to watch it once and then the same thing happens. He jostles his books, more stuff falls and again, almost loses his grip to try to recover the books. So it starts yeah, raining yeah. parchment and books down on you guys. You know, that old man's going to die. <laughs> well, there we go. Natural one. Or right two, at the end? One. So one, I made one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth roll. So you made it down 45 feet. So what is that? 15, 15 feet left. Yep. So reflex, 20. <laughs> oh, God. You guys want to catch him? <laughs> I'm going to try. I, I yep. don't think hey, I can. Hey, I'll see. give it to you because he said, be, be ready to catch me. Six. So I he gets it. down and he's five foot up in the lip and you guys are watching and the books kind of start fluttering down and then he falls. <gasps> Anyone want to do the dive save to help cushion? Uh, Ren would. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ren's Relax. job is protection. So. I could just read his books, right? I don't need his knowledge. All oh right. my God. Okay. Uh, Ren, uh, Ren, I will, you, you desperately dive in there. I will let you you know, share the damage if you can make a DC of 20. Reflex. Uh, same thing, reflex 20, yeah. Yep. Three. <laughs> so I'm afraid. Real damage. Die. Two whole points of lethal splatty damage as the old man plops on the floor. And we will see you next time on The Man from Osirian. Uh, might you know meet his end? No, no, you're not from this area. No, no. The man from Syria isn't you. We keep we keep saying that. Um, say good night, Arif. We're all gonna die. Good night, everybody.